Are you looking for a source of relaxation and stimulation? Today, Liz shares truths about the importance of play with children as well as with adults. She shares how play is a key factor in how we develop our bodies, our minds, and our social skills for our lives. She also provides four examples on ways we can incorporate play into our daily lives. So please stick around and enjoy the show. Come from my guest today, Ms. Liz Wu. She's going to wow us on the power of play. And so she brought us in with those beautiful notes. I wish I could play drum, but I don't. But one of these days, maybe she'll teach me. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Ms. Liz Wu. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. And thanks for inviting me. Oh, um, it's a pleasure. Yes. When you asked me, you know, what I thought I could share about, um, I thought about the importance of play in our lives and the benefits of having a playful approach to life. So I thought it would be fun to bring it in with some music um, because I am playing an instrument and um, I'm a professional musician. I'm also an arts instructor and I work within um, greater Cincinnati area for the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra Sound Discoveries Program as well as the Cincinnati Arts Association's Journey Program and for school aid as well. And so I'm really passionate about um, the ideas of playfulness, of learning, of integrative learning, and just in inspiring passion in young people, but also adults as well. Right, right. I, I love it. Like I so said, you always have some enthusiasm and stuff like that. And like I so said, I always try to break it down so we can, you know, we can take any gets at work out of there. So what to you is play? So we, we get all that stuff straight. <laughs> I'm glad you asked that because that's actually uh, one of the things I was going to throw out there is what is play? And there are many definitions for that word. So why don't we just brainstorm a little bit? Obviously, you can play an instrument. That's one type of play. What's mm -hmm. another type of play? Oh, uh, just playing with your friends. I love playing with my granddaughter. So she's always, she's always gives me back to my childhood. Absolutely. And then, of course, there's a theatrical style of play, right? When you pretend to play a character or a role. Can you think of any other types of play? Oh uh, yeah, but that's not adult. <laughs> we're trying to keep it. We're trying to keep clean here. <laughs> okay. Well, what comes to mind for me is sports. You know, <laughs> right. They even call um, certain strategies plays. So this word just has a lot of um, possible meanings. And <laughs> I looked up the dictionary definition, and that is to engage in an activity for enjoyment or recreation rather than a serious or practical purpose. Right. I thought it was an interesting way to put it because they juxtapose it to something that's useful or serious when in fact, play itself can have a lot of purpose. It can have a lot of um, benefits. So that's something I thought we could explore today. <laughs> right. And while we're talking about what play is, what do you think could be the opposite of play? Uh non-play is just too serious taking life too serious and not knowing how to enjoy the moment yeah and you know some people think of play as being um the opposite of work but um it's not necessarily the case um there's a saying that play is the highest form of research and for young people young for kids but also for mammals any mammal um when they're young Playing is how we develop, you know, it's how we develop our bodies, it's how we develop our brains, and it's how we learn how the world works and how to be social with our colleagues, friends, families, whoever is around us. And so play is really, really important. And in fact, it builds the foundations for what we use all of our skills for the rest of our life. So in fact, it's a really important work. Right. And so 
yeah, I mean, just love thinking about this concept of play and how integral it is to our lives. So play is something that inspires curiosity. It allows you to explore, to be adventurous, it's innovative. And if you think of those qualities, wouldn't you want that in your work? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you want that in your job? Wouldn't you want that in your life? So the idea of play being juxtaposed to these things that we want, I think, you know, it's, um, it's confusing. And I think that that may be one of the reasons as adults why people restrict themselves from being playful because it's often shown in juxtaposition to all of these desirable qualities when in fact it can enhance those qualities. Definitely, definitely. I, I, I definitely agree with you because like I said, sometimes when I have a thought or, you know, a struggle or something and I'm like trying to like work through my head, if I just take a moment and, you know, go play with my granddaughter or, you know, just, just, I walk my dogs to me. Sometimes that's just a light, a light form of play, but it just comes to you, you know, you know, these insights just pop in. So it's like easing of your mind. So yeah, there's tons of benefits to play. And I, I think people forget about the importance of play. Yeah. And um, while we're on that, no, I'd like to try something real quick. And this is for the listeners, but maybe you can play along as well. And so I'm going to give you a few prompts and just raise your hand if this applies to you, okay? Okay. So raise your hand if you are a great dancer. I am. <laughs> raise your hand if you are a fantastic singer. Nummy. <laughs> Raise your hand if you are a wonderful leader. I can just put my hand up on that one. Raise your hand if you have a brilliant mind. I'll double hand that one. <laughs> and raise your hand if you're excited about life. Okay. I'm over here. I, I knew you were going to raise your hand for most of those. <laughs> but as we're doing this, and you know, you could apply this to any question in your life. But um, as we're doing this, now I want you to imagine that I asked that question of a bunch of kindergartners. And <laughs> what do you think would be the response? Oh, their hands would be go all, all up, all up, yes. Yeah, typically, you know, if I'm in a classroom and um, the ages are five and six or below, if I ask some of these questions, everybody's going to say, me, 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 me. And so my question is, when does that stop? When do we stop? thinking or believing that we have those qualities. What, what do you think? What do you think limits people? Probably usually experiences, you know, they, they've been told, somebody's told them, no, you can't do that. Or, you know, when you start to say, oh, I want to be this, somebody's going to be like, no, you can't do that. So, I mean, it's usually um, people put their, uh, what do you call it? Their um, injections, their thoughts on, onto the children or, or, you know, so we already like sort of like cancel out their dreams before they even got started. Absolutely. You know, a lot of times um, these limitations start uh, coming about in childhood, whether it's a family, fa excuse me, whether it's a family, family member, can't say that word today, or <laughs> a peer, um, you know, somebody in your class, maybe you decide you want to get up and do the activity and somebody else is laughing at you. Um, maybe you think, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. Oh, I can't draw very well. I can't do X, Y, Z. And um, little by little, you know, if your world is this big of your options, little by little, it starts to shrink. And your idea of what's available to you in the world gets smaller and smaller. Well, in reality, you know, people um, maybe by the age of 12 or, or 13 have shrunk their world to a, a, a great amount. And that's maybe one of the reasons why um, as a teenager, I can definitely um, remember, you know, just really feeling insecure or uh, less confident about how I was going to approach things and, you know, having to be really mindful of what I wore or what I did around people, you know what I mean? And then I eventually, um, I came out of that shell, but I think for some, like, that can be a struggle. Yeah. And, and so, you know, if you think about it logically, okay, so-and-so made fun of me. In third grade, I go on Facebook or social media, I look that person up. Oh, okay, this is what they're doing now. Do you think that they have any thoughts or opinions about whether or not I go dancing or whether I draw something? No. Probably not. I'm not worried about that. And yet, 
you know, this leftover shell of something they said to me so long ago might still be affecting my daily life. And so if we can develop a playful spirit and then a playful approach to life, we can overcome some of those things and we can take a look and go, oh yeah, you know, that, that was something that I believed when I was seven because of so-and-so. I don't necessarily need to live by those rules anymore. Um, and same if it is an adult, you know, sometimes adults, whether they're teachers or family members or even just passersby, you know, if they say something for us as a child and we take that in and internalize that, that can become something that we live by for the rest of our life. So I always like to caution adults to be really selective about how you communicate with children because there's this saying that what you say, your words to a child can become their inner life, their inner voice. And so you may be in a moment of frustration or you've had a bad day and you're not choosing your words uh, carefully. You know, you may say something that you don't necessarily mean for them to take literally that in fact they do. And then for the rest of the, their life, they believe X, Y, Z limiting belief. So it's something that, you know, we can be um, compassionate about and aware of towards ourselves, but also towards the young people around us as well. Definitely. You, you make a valid point, Ms. Liz, and I think a lot of people forget it. And I just want to also remind us that if you're enjoying what Liz is putting down in here and you're picking up a lot of her golden nuggets, please hit that like button down there for us. And, and please, please share us a comment. So yes, Liz is touching it on, on all uh, points that, you know, somewhere in our minds, you know, we had these great dreams. And I had this one woman ask me, she says, what what did you love to do when you were a child? And I remember sitting here and I used to make up dance moves with my brothers. <laughs> we were gonna do, you know, we were gonna to to do, you know, dances and, and everything like that. So where where what what's some of the things that you would recommend to um adults when they're starting to like realize that they're they're hindering their children by what they say. I mean I, I is there any like, you know, you want to uh, reprimand them, but is there a healthy way to reprimand them, but not stifle them as, as young adults? <clears throat> that is an awesome question. Uh, I think that could be its own whole conversation. Um, and there's, there's a lot of resources out there about this, you know, constructive ways to communicate um, with children. But I would say um, for me as an educator, it's to put myself in their shoes. Okay, so like I can very vividly remember being three, four years old and, um, you know, my mom had several sisters. They all had the same hairstyle, long brown hair. They all looked like my mom because, you know, they're sisters and I could not tell any of the aunts apart. Of course, I knew my mom, but as far as her sisters were concerned, they all looked the same to me. And I just looked up, saw the long brown hair. I knew they were one of my aunts, didn't know which one. And so for a child, if you can like think back and remember, everybody looks taller, you know, things can be more intimidating. You don't have the motor skills or coordination to do things quickly all of the time. Um, you know, I can remember when I was like maybe two, uh, I was going up these steep steps in our house. My grandmother was behind me and she was getting impatient by how slowly I was walking up the steps. So she gave me a little nudge. And unfortunately, I fell and hit my teeth and broke like a little bit of my teeth off. And she wasn't pushing hard. She wasn't trying to be mean. She was just kind of old school and like, hey, let's keep, let's get going. But I didn't have the physical ability at that time to move the way that she wanted me to move. Like if you think of Serpentine Wall, you know, the steps are this high to you. If you think of a two-year-old, a steep step is going to be this high. They cannot physically move that quickly. And so I think as an instructor or as a parent, you can put yourself in their shoes and go, okay, if I were trying to communicate to me, but I was this tall and I hadn't had a good nap and I hadn't had anything to eat and, you know, X, Y, Z, then maybe there's some other needs that need to be met before I can communicate this thing. You know, what are the needs of this individual right now? And are they even capable of doing what they're being asked? Right. And so I think that that can help put things in perspective. Right, right. And I, and I know we talked about what is play and stuff like that. So really, how, how can we integrate 
play into our our daily lives and stuff like that? What what what's some of the great things that we can do to get back into that playfulness? Yeah, perfect question. So I would say, um, why don't we play a quick game? Okay. And the reason I bring this up is because this is the type of thing that you can do day to day. You can do it with other people, which is more fun, in my opinion. But you can also do it um, just in your in your mind as you're driving or or what have you. So this is a game called free association. It's particularly great if you are wanting to get into a creative mindset, say that you have to write something or you've got to talk to some people and you just want to kind of get um, your creativity flowing. In this game, there are no wrong answers. Okay. (laughs) So the goal is to be quick. The goal is to just let your brain do its thing and not censor it. So what we're going to do is you think of words. Okay, I know it's the internet. <laughs> yeah, let's keep it family friendly. But, <laughs> but you know, what, what we're going to do is trade off. I'll say a word. Okay. And then you say the first word that comes to your mind. And okay. And do the same thing based on your word. So the okay. trick is I can't still stay stuck on the first word. You have to be in the moment and react to the next word. So you never really know what's going to come next. That's why it's more fun with people. If you do it yourself, it's still a great activity, but you know, when you're working with other people, then you get surprised every time. Okay. okay. And okay. so we just go back and forth, um, you know, a little bit and then just see what happens and see what, where we, where we start and where we end up. Okay. okay. So, All right. Um, cow. Old McDonald. Burger King. Whopper. Big. Mmm. Small. Mouse. A cat. Dog. Bone. White. Teeth. (laughs) Did you piggy? I said teeth. (laughs) Teeth. Dentist. (laughs) What was, I'm sorry. Dentist. Mmm, floss. <laughs> and toothbrush. Okay, so we went from cow to toothbrush. Right. And if you take those two words together, it doesn't sound very logical. Like, how are they connected? But mentally, they were connected. And so in our brains, all kinds of things are connected. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else, right? It makes sense to us. <laughs> and it just shows, like, from this little exercise, um, how well advertising works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's weird, but if you say McDonald's, I think Burger King and then you know Popeyes and the rest. So I guess if you're into marketing, yeah, this is really good for you. But <laughs> but you know, this it gets easier as you go. So the first time you play, it's usually like pulling teeth a little bit, like, oh, what's the next word gonna be? And then a little bit of slight anxiety over what's the other person gonna say? Can I respond to it quickly? And part of that is our desire, one, to control things, and two, the desire um, to have a really good word, you know? You don't want to just have, like, a a mediocre word, but you have to kind of get over that because the point of the game is just to be creative and let your mind just do its thing. You don't know what's going to happen. Just like when you, you know, fall asleep at night, you don't know what kind of crazy things your brain's going to do. Your dreams, you know, might be kind of funny or wacky, but... It makes sense to your brain, right? And so this game is the same thing. You just kind of let your creative creativity flow. And if you do this like right before you need to write or like I said, speak, it can just help, you know, get those neurons firing. And it's also fun too. Like if you have a big group of people and you go around a, in a circle, some of the things will have people rolling on the ground. Cause it's like, you know, you go from here. <laughs> like, you discuss it, gotta go to the next person. And it just keeps going. So it's a really fun way to, um, yeah, just play with your thoughts, play with words, and stay engaged. Right, right. So I know we're wrapping up. We're down to the last few minutes or so. So what's the one thing you want to leave the audience with? I would say um, just on the you know topic we were just talking about, it's how can I integrate play into my daily life? I know it has benefits. Um, it helps relieve stress. It helps... Um, promote usefulness. Actually, there's been some research done that play helps delay cognitive decline in older Mm. adults. 
So, and that play typically will involve movement as well, but the idea of staying active and um, creative, like that is so great for us at any age. The, um, the idea of how can I incorporate this into my daily life? So I would say, first of all, be curious. Be curious about everything. And, you know, when you have what they call beginner's mind, you're able to learn. Once you think you understand something or you know how something's going to go, your brain starts kind of ignoring things. You know, think about like, when's the last time you drove somewhere and it was your regular route and you got from A to Z and you don't even know how you got there. You're, you're just right. on autopilot, right? So stay curious. Stay, um, stay playful in the sense of, oh, maybe I don't know everything about this subject because if you turn it just a little bit, you might see a new angle. You know, for example, I know how to write my name. Can I write it with my left hand? Well, my non-dominant hand, how does that look? Okay, so by doing little things like that, I start, oh, noticing, oh my gosh, when I do it with this hand, I do it this way. When I do it with that hand, I do it the other way and so on and so forth. It keeps you engaged in your life and really noticing the little details of things. Um, additionally, be willing to take risks and get outside of your comfort zone. That's a big part of play. And I don't mean, you know, jump off of buildings and things like that. What I mean is if you get offered this great opportunity, take it, try it, be willing to try something new, even if you're not sure you can do it. Cause when you go and you're a kid and you're running outside, you jump in a ball game, you don't know if you're going to win or not. You just know you're going to, you're going to try right. and that. That um, trying is what helps you develop those skills to achieve. And so that's another thing. Um, have a sense of humor. You know, life doesn't have to be all serious. It's a lot more enjoyable when you can have fun and laugh. And so um, think about ways to incorporate humor into your day to day. And as little annoyances happen, you can just take a, a pause and know that you have the control on how you want to respond to it. So if somebody cuts you off in traffic, that's like, you know, everybody like um, has a traffic story, right? And so it's, but in that moment, you can, you can uh, make a choice. Do you want to laugh about it? Or do you want to risk your life and try to cut them back off? You know, it's, it's up to you. Um, I'd say it's safer just to laugh it off. Um, and so <clears throat> things like that. And then this is a really important one uh, for me. And I think, uh, you know, it's, it's great to do whenever you can. And that is to learn a new skill. Try something new. Things that you're terrible at, okay? So if I'm a good cook and I want to learn a new recipe, that's great. And that's still kind of new. And so that still can be very playful. But to one-up that a little bit more is maybe do something I've never done before. Because then you're building these new neuron uh, connections and you're developing new skills. So if you try something that you're not good at, it's really gonna yield some extra results um, than if you do something that's already kind of in your wheelhouse. I'll give you an example. Um, this is kind of a fun story. When I was in college, I think somebody gave me a birthday present of like an astrological reading, okay? So I went and I saw this um, person, she did my chart and everything, and she said a bunch of stuff. Most of it I don't remember. However, there was this one detail that stuck out to me because it was like, really? Okay. And she said, um, I see that later in your life you are going to do an activity. Oh, it looks like, well, it looks like it's related to dance. Do you like to dance? And at the time, um, I was a very awkward dancer, okay? So I used to go sometimes to dance salsa, but I wasn't that great, and I definitely didn't consider myself a professional dancer, um, let alone, you know, somebody who would put myself out there that way. And so, you know, time went on. We won't say how much time since college, but <laughs> time went on. And then later, um, I actually did pursue a um, profession in fitness. So I'm also a fitness instructor, and one of the early certifications that I, um, that I went for was Zumba which is dance fitness. And so approaching it from an exercise um, angle, I ended up dancing. And then I started dancing so frequently that I was teaching it. 
And then after I was teaching it, I had to step back and think, oh, I guess I'm a dancer now. You know? <laughs> right. I mean, I'm not like going out there trying to find gigs as a dancer, although I have actually been in a couple music videos. Um, but it became, then it became part of my wheelhouse. So one of my, what I would have considered at the time, my weaknesses turned into something I got paid to do. So it's kind of crazy that way. But I think um, that when you can target, target something that could be fun, but that you're a little scared of and that you don't have any experience with, those are the things that really can just get your brain going um, and it can be an adventure. And then afterwards, the sense of accomplishment and confidence that you feel after you do master that craft, you know, it's, it's worth it. So right, right. I guess that's, where I would, that's what I would say is try something new, but outside of your comfort zone. Definitely, definitely. I, I love your, your wisdom on that, Ms. Liz. And where can people find more information about you, your services, and what you do? Um, that's a good question. So I think if you just search me in Google, you'll probably find some stuff. I didn't come with a whole list of links. Maybe I'll send you, um, you know, my socials just so people can find me easily if they want to. Um, otherwise, um, you can check uh, the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra's website for the Sound Discoveries program. There's a bunch of videos there. Uh, for teaching music and music um, integrated with other subjects such as math, science, and language arts. Um, and yeah, that's what I would say. Just ask, ask the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely put, like I said, everything that uh, Liz has mentioned will be posted in the comments and stuff like that. And as we wrap up this episode right here, I want to remind everyone, feedback is always welcome. Email us if you have any guests and show ideas. And I want to thank Liz for her time for being on here, please. I thank you for all your wisdom that you shared. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And I also want to say, if you uh, enjoyed watching the show, please, again, give us a thumbs up. Share some comments and um, some of your uh, feedback in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're enjoying all the insights that you're getting from the wisdom that folks are, come on, please subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button down there below. And remember, Take things in stride, go with the flow, and create your own path. And we'll see you back on another episode of Coffee with Tea. So for right now, have a great day. Share with us. What was one of your takeaways from today's show? Post your answers in the comments. everyone this is tanya popping in again to say thank you for listening to today's show coffee with tea interviews are always free and if you're enjoying the wisdom and insights that's being shared please consider showing your support by all means buy me a coffee or become a supporter links are posted in the comments and again thank you for tuning in